Hi everyone, welcome again to another financial analysis video with myself, Murray Damin, and Ted Wayman. So today we're going to be looking at uh, Range Resources Corporation. Um, before we dive in, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you are a subscriber, or if actually if you're a viewer, if there is a company that you're interested in, whether it's for selling purposes, you're selling to that company, and you want to know a bit about the finances, or if you're thinking about investing in the company, or even if you're joining the company as an employee and you want to sound uh, impressive on the interview, do leave a note in the comment section and make your request for the company you would like us to analyze. 98% of the companies we analyze here are a request from you, the viewers. If you're a subscriber, you will get instant notification of when we publish your analysis. So let's get to it. Um, Range Resource Corporation. Now, this is an interesting business because... Uh, this, uh, this company is essentially natural gas or, or, or natural gas liquids. And they're actually one of the biggest players in the US. Uh, and they're a pure play business, which basically means that, and they're one of the few actually in America, and basically that means that they're dedicated to natural gas resource rather than other companies that may have a portfolio that includes crude oil, for example. Now, um, they uh, primarily... Uh, have uh, assets uh, and land or reserves in uh, Pennsylvania, and they have about 460,000 acres of land or, 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 or of space that they're using to extract uh, the natural gas. Now, the stock price has been rising, uh, which is bucking the trend generally because, as we all know right now, stocks are pretty much in decline across the board. Uh, but they're bucking that trend, which is interesting, which I, I guess is why we got this request. And just before we show who, who made the request, um, one thing to also note is that uh, from analysis, this company has about 15 years worth of reserves. Now, that is important, obviously, for, for a resource company, because the reserves and the amount of reserves that they have basically gives you an idea of its run rate as a business and therefore how long uh, they will hold their value as an investor uh, if you are an investor in this company. So worth knowing about that. So uh, the request came in from one of our viewers, uh, you know, Vipul Sharma. Uh, you know, this is your video. I uh, hope you find it uh, useful. Do leave uh, leave a note for us once you've watched this, so that we can so you can let us know. Uh, quick note on the share price before we go into the financials and. We're actually going to talk about the share price and the context for that later on. So stick around for that. That's going to be very important once we analyze the fundamental uh, financials here. But they floated in 2018. If you invested then, uh, you would be sitting on an increase of six, around 67%, not bad. Um, and uh, if you'd invested last year, you'd be sitting on an increase of 59%. So there seems to have been a bit of an an upward trajectory and then a bit of a decline. So could now be a good time to buy such a company? We'll find out later on, or at least we'll see what the fundamental financials give some sort of clue about that. So let's get to it. Um, Ted, let's uh, let's share with our viewers the finances for this company. Some interesting things, actually, when we when we looked at it. Yeah, good to see you, Moe. Thank you very much indeed. So and welcome to all of our viewers. Um, here we go. So let's go and have a look at uh, Range Resources annual report on the cap. Here it is. It's for 2021. It's on their website. Now, there are some uh, updated figures, a quarterly, um, but we're just going to look at the, um, the audited uh, figures. And obviously, you can apply uh, these, uh, this analysis um, to their latest uh, forecasts and projections. We're going to whiz through this 10K all the way down uh, to the actual financial statements, which you will find uh, a little bit further down. And we're going to start with the income statement. So here is the income statement. Um, and we are looking at 2021. So there is 2021, the left-hand column. Um, and we are dealing in dollars. Uh, we're dealing in dollars in thousands. So uh, when we look at the total revenue here, it is 2.9 million thousand which is two points, so just shy of $3 billion. So that kind of gives us an idea of how big uh, this company is. $3 billion in turnover. Um, you'll notice here, quite interesting, um, that there's this kind of this derivative fair value 
um, adjustments. So um, what these guys are doing is that they are using derivatives in order to manage their exposure to the, uh, the, the price of gas. Um, so in effect, what they're doing is they're extracting it and they're saying, look, you know, we kind of just want to, we want to know what we're going to sell it for. Um, and therefore we are kind of, you know, buying the, the right to sell it at a future price at some point in the future. And sometimes they're going to make a loss on that. And sometimes they're going to make a profit on that. So that kind of, um, but that's what they're trying to do is just to take risk out of it. They won't, don't want gas to go to kind of, you know, zero dollars and then suddenly find that they're trying to extract it and they can't sell it uh, at a profit. Um, increase in uh, the revenue, um, pretty substantial increase in revenue, 49%. Um, although you'll notice that there was a corresponding a decrease in value 2019 to 20. So again, you're probably looking there at some, you know, the pandemic, uh, oil prices falling, um, uh, and that's going to sort of taken its hit there, um, and then they'll come back again. So that's not necessarily a 49% increase in production. A lot of that will be a 49% in increase in the price of uh, natural gas. Um, and these guys will be what's known as a price taker, i.e. the market will set the price of gas, and then they will sell it at that market price, hence the use of derivatives to manage their exposure. No real cost of sales here. So it's a kind of a fixed cost business. It's a kind of, it's a production business. Um, biggest cost there is a kind of transportation, uh, gathering, processing and compression. So liquid natural gas, you kind of need to take that gas and compress it down. That costs a lot of money. A um, few other things to notice here. We've got the interest. So typically, uh, you know, in our, in our traditional kind of structure of a P&L account, we'd be taking our interest out. Um, the tax is down the bottom down here. We'll look at that in a minute. They're actually getting some tax rebates, which is quite nice. Um, there's the depletion amortization um, and, uh, uh, and depreciation amortization charge. Um, uh, and uh, a couple of other things. So uh, things like um, these exit and termination costs. So, um, you know, when they have finished, uh, uh, ex their expiration, they need to um, they need to kind of make good. Uh, for example, there's some expiration costs coming in there. Um, there's abandonment. It's not a big number, but um, you know they're kind of you know they're, they're out there. They're looking uh, and they're they're exploring. And some of that exploration, they're just going. You know what? We couldn't find any. We need to kind of close up and move on. Uh, and that's the cost of doing that. So um, some interesting numbers. You look at that abandonment, for example, back in 2019. That was a significant number they spent a billion basically of just like you know just binning stuff and just saying this isn't going to happen we're gonna we're gonna pull out anyway the summary is that you know it, so you know looking at these three numbers they've kind of got you know uh, some quite big impairments and quite big abandonment um big big loss uh back in 2019 a loss in 2020 and now they are making a profit now i'm sure that those numbers are structured into into telling a telling a story and what they want the market to realize or the market to read into this is that you know we have now turned around from being loss making we're now profit making you know climb on board and the share price should start going north um it's never quite that easy um in the exploration because if they kind of hit a few more dud wells um uh, then they are back to loss making so this is not a massive profit margin 400 million uh, on a two uh, on a three billion turnover you're looking at about 14 percent, so not a lot of room for error a little bit of um a sort of tax rebates these kind of deferred tax um rebates coming through um, uh, you'll notice here uh, and, and there's their bottom line about 412 um a uh, million million dollars bottom line profit so there's the profit and loss cap uh, not a lot else i can kind of add to that i guess um uh you know income per share has gone from negative to positive as we'd expect um in terms of the balance sheet um quite interesting the balance sheet so uh just these the uh, these bits down here this is the the non current assets so these are the things that we need to run the business interesting that they actually show the depreciation so this is the accumulated depreciation charge on the um uh, on the uh, balance sheet so they're saying look you know all the stuff that we bought cost us 10 billion and to date we have depreciated it by 4.4 billion so it's worth about 5.8 billion that's the kind of um the story they're telling us there uh, and these are the natural gas and oil properties uh, and successful efforts of methods so there's a particular method of accounting for 
the uh, the uh, pl property plant and equipment they've got, which is sitting over um, uh, uh, you know proven reserves from which they are effectively extracting right now. Um, and then up at the top, uh, we've got the uh, the current assets um, uh, and the current assets um, up here. Uh, they've got the cash, so reasonable amount of cash. Quite interesting, big increase in cash um, going on during the year. Might have a look at the cash flow to find out what's going on there. Accounts receivable uh, has also increased. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, that's really driving this increase in the total current assets. You remember current assets, things that we own, which we are trying to turn into cash or already are cash. Um, down the bottom, we've got our liabilities. Now, interesting, the current liabilities. So here we've got a ratio, the, the kind of the, 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 um, uh, the current ratio comparing the current assets to the current liabilities, this uh, looks to me like it's an, al an alarm bell. This doesn't look at all healthy. Um, uh, uh, now, I'm, I'm not overly familiar with oil and gas and, and, and liquid natural. So, you know, I don't know whether there's something in their business model that allows them uh, to operate at that kind of negative uh, liquidity ratio. I know that there are um, industry sectors which are quite comfortable at operating at a liquidity ratio of below one. I don't know whether these guys are in there. There's nothing obvious that I can think of that would lend itself um, uh, to that. Uh, they've got things like these accrued liabilities. Um, and these accrued liabilities, these will effectively, I would guess, be decommissioning costs. So in effect, if you're drilling, um, you need to be putting some money aside metaphorically in order to pay for the decommissioning um, uh, that you are going to be incurring on those uh, uh, on those um, uh, exploration um, wells effectively for want of a better word um, a little bit of short-term debt in there um, uh, some derivative liabilities again these derivatives they're kind of they're, they're stuck all over the place um, uh, and you'll see some derivative assets up there and again they're just using um, uh, using derivatives to manage their exposure to adverse you know, exchange rate movements, perhaps, but probably more likely um, uh, uh, exchange uh, 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 commodity prices, i.e. liquid um, uh, gas uh, prices. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, not 100 percent convinced by that by that liquidity ratio. And, um, you know, once again, I I'm always willing if, if we have a viewer who's um, more knowledgeable about this particular sector and would like to set me straight, uh, I'm more than happy to. Um, uh, uh, to take their, their, their comments. Um, do be, please be polite um, in the comment section. Um, quite a lot of debt, um, just a lot of debt, you know, and I, and I get these guys, you know, they are in the exploration and the extraction. Typically, you're going to fund exploration through equity and debt um, for the extraction, um, but they do have a lot of debt. And that is just, you know, potentially, you know, makes me a little bit nervous. They're, they're something like, you know, 60% funded through debt, 40% funded through equity. And that looks to me like it is quite high. Um, and that's really taking up most of their, um, their non-current liabilities. Um, you know, they, they have some, some other stuff as well um, in there, but really the substantial amount um, is, is, that, is that debt. Um, and that brings us down to their, um, uh, their shareholders' funds. And you'll notice on their shareholders' funds that these guys are really, they're funded through investment by the shareholders uh, and they have been, they've been making losses. Now, those losses have come down because they've made a profit in the year. And the question is, have they turned this metaphorical corner? Is it now you know, profits all the way through or are those profits going to bounce around and sometimes they're going to be making a loss, sometimes they're going to be making a profit? I don't know what the answer is to that. The cash flow statement. Uh, oh, let's just we'll, we'll look at the um, uh, the the, uh, the movement in equity. Nothing really very exciting going on in the movement of equity. Um, we can see um, there's the loss uh, from the previous year. There's the uh, the profit from this year. They're not paying out any dividends. You wouldn't expect them to. Um, they're not doing any shy share buyback. So uh, nothing really interesting going on in the in the movement in equity. Um, so in terms of their cash flow. Cash flow is quite interesting. You'll notice that they are generating cash. Okay, so these numbers here suggest they are very cash positive. Even when they're making a loss, they're generating lots and lots of cash. Um, and uh, what you're seeing here is um, uh, you know, things like these kind of these, these um, uh, this depletion 
um, abandonment of unapproved properties. You know, these are costs to them, but because they've already been accounted for, um, uh, uh, they're not actually costing any more um, in terms of the cash. So quite interesting, looking at this number here, um, this is the net cash flow from their operating activities. Just to remind us, this is the cash equivalent of their operating profit effectively. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of kind of um, uh, this, this uh, uh, movement in the, um, in the derivatives um, and there's kind of cash settlement on derivative financial instruments offsetting um, a, a, a cash um, uh, uh, loss. Um, uh, so effectively, they're kind of they're, they're paying off that derivative loss, um, uh, or effectively they, 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 they're covering their derivative loss. So really, this profit is effectively your profit um, uh, uh, add back depreciation, and you end up with the um, uh, the the operating um, the operating profit. Um, and I think that you know this is this is um, you know so so the, these guys are generating cash, and that's and that's definitely a good thing. Um, they are investing, so um, they are kind of they're, they're uh, you know they are adding um, to their fields, whether that's by <coughs> buying companies or, or exploring into new areas. It's not absolutely um, 100% uh, certain, but they are adding um, a little bit of divestment going on, disposal of assets. You'll notice a couple of years ago that's fine um, uh, once in a while. Um, and then in terms of financing, um, we can see here uh, borrowings and repayment of borrowings. They are they're paying down their debt. Um, uh, in fact, they're not. They're, 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 they're pretty much. I'm sorry. We need to take these three numbers together. In fact, we probably need to take these four numbers together. So take these four numbers together, uh, and what you see is that they are pretty much kind of even keel, um, uh, and they're just refinancing their debt. So they're not trying to pay down that debt. They're just refinancing. Little bit of debt issuance costs, tax paid. Um, uh, you know, no dividends. Uh, no share buyback. So, you know, really the sum total, having had not a lot of cash sitting in the bank, um, they've ended up with actually, a, you know, a pretty reasonable cash pile, $214 million, which I guess makes me a lot more comfortable than a company um, like this, $3 billion turnover, um, potentially making a loss with $458,000 um, uh, uh, um, in the bank. You know, really, there's not a lot of a wiggle room there so they have been um preserving cash which is certainly you know a, a a good thing um and it looks to me like they can afford their debt as well um so just go back to the um you know this uh, uh this um uh interest that they're paying um you know if we were to kind of you know structure this in a, in a traditional way they're making an operating profit of 629 before interest and tax and they're paying 227 of interest three times covered, um, which uh, gives me some sort of reasonable confidence. So I think the answer is that these are, you know, these are numbers which, are, which I mean, they're interesting. Um, I, I, I'm struggling to know whether they're really, you know, it looks like there's a theme, but I'm struggling to know whether there really is a theme. It's cash generating, it's turning the um, uh, turning the um, uh, the corner, it's got a, a liquidity ratio shot to pieces, but maybe that's okay um, for the industry. But, uh, you know, I don't know, there's something that just doesn't quite hang true for me, and I'm not 100% convinced. Um, let's go and have a look at the share price, as you mentioned, Moeed. Um, so here is the share price. Um, it's up, it's bouncing around a little bit, um, it, you know, kind of timing the market. Um, quite interesting looking at some of the, um, uh, the metrics in the red, um, uh, in the red um, uh, box here. We've got a market cap of 7.2 billion. Um, so just to remind us that the, um, uh, the, the balance sheet is about 2 billion. So you're looking at just over 5 billion of kind of goodwill um, stuffed in there. So, um, you know, there's a, you know, if there is a lot of good news, a lot of that is reflected um, in the actual uh, market. I mean, it's also interesting that they don't have a PE ratio. Um, that may be, and as I said, we haven't looked at the um, quarterly earnings. It may be that they're now in a quarterly loss, which is why the P ratio has gone to zero. But, you know, they were 17 times earnings. And 17, 17 and a half times earnings based on 2001 is, well, it's not overly cheap. Um, uh, and there's no dividend yield. Not, right? So to, 2021, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so, you know, based on the 2021 numbers, um, you know, it, if we if we plug in our earnings of, of 412 million dollars, 
um, then they would be trading on, on a 17 and a half times earnings ratio, which is not, you know, it's not, it's not crazy expensive like the markets have been recently, but it's not crazy, crazy cheap either. It's not a screaming buy um, all over this. No dividend yield because they're not paying out dividends. Are they going to pay out dividends? Well, again, that kind of depends on, on whether you buy into their, into their story. So I think, you know, the, the kind of the conclusion here, Moe, is that these guys are, you know, they are, you know, they're kind of, they're there, they're doing what they do. It, it's, it's a, you know, is this a commodity play? Quite possibly. Um, I, I'm not sure that they're kind of, you know, they're really delivering um, what uh, they have been promising. And, and the question is, have they turned the corner? Have they kind of, are they now going to start delivering jam? This looks like to me, it's been a, a jam tomorrow stock for a while. Um, uh, and, you know, they've been burning cash. Uh, uh, but then maybe, uh, you know, world of inflation, um, we're looking at, you know, gas prices rising, all the problems going on in the Ukraine, for example, you know, maybe these guys are a good play. Maybe these are a good energy um, uh, an energy play, and, and and maybe that's the kind of the rise that we've seen um, over the uh, you know over the over the last you know few months. You can see since 2022, but um, I, I'm I'm not sure this is really for the faint-hearted. Um, I'm not sure you're going to do a multi-bagger on this either. Um, but then I may be wrong on that as well. So who knows, uh, Moe? So there you go. That's my um that's my uh, my kind of viewpoint. No opinions there. Um, uh, staying very much firmly on the fence. I think on this one, Moe. Yeah, yeah. And what will be interesting to see is, you know, one other element that I neglected to mention in the beginning, which is, you know, the analysis shows that uh, demand for natural gas will outpace supply. So that may have an impact in terms of the uh, the price of gas going up, which may, um, you know, as long as they are not hitting too many dud wells, uh, that should uh, prove positive in their uh, p and uh, as well as their probably balance sheet uh, what well, more p l so um, interesting to see how that will how that will go so we'd love to hear anyone else's thoughts particularly those as Ted said who are involved in this industry and know this industry very well you know what are your thoughts here you know could this be a company that one of the larger players may want to acquire uh, which might mean a, a premium on your investment um, so yeah, do leave a note in the comment section, like, share, subscribe, especially if you subscribe, you will get notification of our next videos, especially those that you have requested. So uh, until the next uh, analysis, thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone. Good to see you, Moe. Catch you later.